Hello and welcome back to another amazing episode of Sports Talk with Dad. A lot of topics to talk about today. AJ McCarron lighting it up. Unfortunately, I know you want to talk about Aaron Rodgers. Oh, actually, I don't. And a lot of new baseball rule changes as well. But before we get into any of that, as always, my name is Kyle and I cannot call this Sports Talk with Dad without the man sitting next to me, a man who saw Babe Ruth when he was playing for the Braves, my dad, Tim. It would have been better if you would have said the Red Sox, because that was actually fourth. Well, you have the Braves guy sitting out here. I wasn't there. Didn't see him. Was not even close. I bet you were. And you know where I can make that bet is our new sponsor, <laughs> Bet US. We have had them brought into the Sports Talk with Dad family, as you know, and we are keeping that same promotion right now with where your first deposit, you can win before you win by getting 125% back of your first deposit. You can bet on anything that you'd like with any sport, UFC, baseball, Jake Paul, boxing, whatever you want to bet on, they have it, including a casino and even a gaming center. Do not miss out on this chance to win before you even win by getting 125% back on your first deposit with BetUS. Follow the link you see on the screen and in the description below you know what i didn't bet on what how much i am now in love with aj mccarran yeah i know you've told me about his wife a lot well the he, wise man <laughs> with with a very very i mean the dude literally had his national championship game the only reason people remember it is because his wife was there but but defense, honestly sweet, as sweet lady by since the way. this is sports talk with yes, dad let's do the sports part of it well, we need to talk about him being the dad of the year at this point. A.J. McCarron had a chance to be a backup quarterback in the NFL. Could have made $4 million a year being a backup quarterback. Clearly, he's proven in the XFL right now. This guy can still play and is an NFL-level talent. But his son, he caught his son watching old highlights of him when he played for Alabama and the Bengals and just watching him play football and decided he wanted to make memories with his six-year-old and he wanted him to see his dad actually play. So it turned down going back to the NFL and decided to be in the XFL instead so his kid could see him play. Which is awesome. I mean, that's the, if I have a bigger, biggest regret is that you guys never got to see me play tennis, even if it was just working with John. I got to see you guys play. Right. But it, it's something special, especially for a six-year-old kid whose his dad is this hero. Right. To actually see him step back and and walk away from money, a lot of money, a lot of money. I think he's uh, should be in the NFL. He has proven it because he is so far above all the rest of the talent in the XFL. Listen, he's made his paycheck going back to the XFL or going to the XFL, I should say, for sure. I mean, he'll get an NFL job next year, possibly with a chance to start. He's going to be able to really pick his team at this point, but I. I thought about it long and hard because I'm like, man, that's a lot of money to turn down. But this guy's made a lot of money in the NFL. Mm -hmm. He's had a couple of big contracts. And if I see my son watching videos of me playing on, on YouTube and watching clips of me, and I have a chance to play where he actually gets to see me at games, I do the same thing. I do it for free. Absolutely. Uh, McCarron's do be absolutely making the right decision. I've talked to people who are going, he's an idiot. He's passing up all that money. You cannot put a price on doing something with your kids. You can't. You can't. And that's such a special moment for them. He, he, is, he is my dad of the year so far in 2023. It's just such an amazing speech he gave, such an amazing moment for him and his family. He and, should be in the conversation, by the way, after what he's shown, and if he continues to show it through the rest of the XFL yeah. season, he should be in there being talked about with the cars and the, maybe not the Rodgers or the Jacksons, but certainly the David Carr. Or, now you have me doing it. I'm not the only the, one. The Derek Carr's of the world, because I think he's every bit as good as him. He could be better. He never really got a fair shot in the NFL, in no, my he opinion. Doesn't. He's always been bet against. Even when he was in college, this guy went to three national championships and won two of them, and he's a fifth-round pick. Like Nobody was ever talking about him being great. There was always other reasons. He had a chance to go and start in Cleveland, and then the Bengals decided they weren't going to trade him. Which is low budget on the Bengals, by the way. It's very low budget. I mean, it worked out for him. They got Joe Burrow at this point. But do I think he could have played better than Andy Dalton did towards the end there? 100%. Well, let me ask you this. If you put A.J. Karen on... A.J. Mick Karen. 
Sorry. AJ McCarron. Yes, it is. What Not did I AJ say? AJ Karen. AJ McCarron. What? I didn't actually say Karen. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you put him on the Raiders, what do you think you're going to see? I think you'd see what you saw when um, Palmer was there for those years. So better than Carr. You, you never know. I mean, Carr, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he just never was as good as we all thought he could be. I, I 100% think his older brother was a lot better. Oh, and sure. just talk about a guy that got screwed. I, I mean, I don't understand. It's like the Bears now. Why are you building a team and, and drafting a quarterback in the first round when you don't have an offensive line? That should be rule number one. Build an offensive line. Don't let your star quarterback that you just drafted in the first round get destroyed every single year. But it happens all the time. It's like the offensive line, the left tackle is an afterthought, and the quarterback's just going to take that kind of a pounding. He, he was a punching bag, and so was Fields. And Fields is going to happen again. I, I just don't understand why you build a team that way, and that's where he got killed. And A.J. McCarron coming in, I think A.J. McCarron's better than Derek Carr. At least he has a chance to be. Now we're seeing him... The argument's going to be, well, it's the XFL, it's less talent. Right. He's winning with less talent. Correct. And he's winning against much superior defenses. Correct. These rules are not made for him. No. And quarterbacks, the way the NFL is. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people, be in the NFL next year, win a starting job, and win quite a few games. I mean, I don't think he's going to be any worse than Jimmy Garoppolo's been. I don't think he's going to be any worse than Kurt Warner was when he was a backup all those years. And he's in the Hall of Fame. I just don't want him to go to a place like the Jets where the pressure will just be ridiculous. But he can handle it. I know he can handle Think it. Think of what the pressure was at Alabama. New York is different. It's just different. And I put him in. Cleveland's not an option, obviously, for stupid reasons. But right. you put him in Baltimore. You put him in Vegas. You put him someplace. Put him like in Arizona. That. Put him in Arizona. That'd be a perfect place for him. I think he's going to excel and I look agree. really good. Put him in Green Bay because I am so tired of hearing about Aaron Rodgers and all the speculation. It may be brilliant on Gutekunst and the Packer organization to keep themselves in the news. I don't know why you constantly want to talk about it. Because I just want to end it. Rodgers hasn't said anything. He's got till March 15th. Let him make his decision. Let him come out and say something, and then we'll talk about it. Hey. Until then, stop. As our friend Shakespeare here said, beware the Ides of March. Exactly. Because something's coming. At two brute? At two brute. I mean, there, Rogers is totally getting stabbed in the back by his general manager right oh, There's now. a shock. For him to come out and be like, all options are open. Ted Thompson, for all his faults, never did that. He said, if Favre wants to come back, he is our quarterback. That's all he ever said. And that's Favre all... is our quarterback. And that's what Goody needs to be saying out in the public right now. Goody clearly wants to move on, which why are you moving on from an, a, a, a guy who just won two MVPs? Well, and the grass I don't wanna, isn't always greener. I don't want to hear about the MVPs because it's a team game. I know Rodgers brings it up a lot, but I want to see him win one for the team. But here's the thing. You Goody, can't discount how good I'm he not, was in I'm 2020 not, and 2020. I'm not discounting it. He was great, but he never got over the hump and got us to the Super Bowl. No, but that was so, bad coaching. Don't get me started on the lousy head coach the Packers have. All right, move but, on with the Rodgers so thing so we can move on to other topics. So, Kudikus has no leverage at all. No. Everything is with Rodgers. Correct. If he says, I'm coming back, you know he's going to restructure his deal to give the Packers more cap room. Right. It's done. And then Jordan Love is probably going to demand a trade, which yep. if I were him, I would. You've sat for three years. You're ready to show what you can do. Right. If Rodgers comes in and says, okay, my time's here done. Get your best deal you can get. Done. Until we hear that, the national media just needs to shut up about it. They stop. There's nothing to talk about right now. You need to stop putting Gouda Kuntz on the freaking media because I think he loves it more than he wants to. Anybody oh, would admit. That's, no the difference. That. that's the difference between Ted Thompson and Brian Gouda Kuntz. Cootie loves the spotlight, and he doesn't deserve to be in it because he's quite honestly not that good at GM. That's all he's proving right now. He's had one good draft. This last draft was good. He got a lot of starters out of this draft. Sure. But every other draft, he hasn't done very well. His free agent signings have been atrocious. Did we sign free agents in Green Bay? I mean, if we did, I don't remember. I mean, he, that's, he had the Smith brothers signing with Zadarius and Preston. And Preston just re-signed. Great. Preston's but been great. Remember Darius was great until he decided he didn't want to play anymore. You remember the wide receiver he signed last year? Yeah. 
Yeah, let's forget about them. <laughs> I do remember. <coughs> God bless you. Apparently, I'm allergic to this conversation. Okay, this so I'm done. So we'll see what happens. I t- I've said it before. I'll say it again. If Rodgers decides to leave, the team he needs to go to is the Washington football team. If they make the sale. If they make the sale. <laughs> Did you hear the news on the sale and how petty Snyder is? Oh, there's a that, that is a blockbuster story right there that Dan Snyder is petty. He is refusing to sell the team to Jeff Bezos, even though he will have the highest offer. The NFL is going to look at him and go, it's not your choice. They're going to make that call at some point. Here's, here's the issue, though. I get that he wants $7 billion for the team. The issue you're going to run into, though, is everybody... Yes, I saw you spit something back in your drink. No, that's, that's, not, smiling. that's not why I'm smiling. I'm thinking, if the commanders are worth... It's the buck sale I want to talk about. Let me get into this first. Yes, so do that. Seven billion dollars is what he's asking for. But the problem is, is everybody knows that they have to build a new stadium as Correct. soon as they buy the team. So yeah, you're selling the stadium that has literal sewage draining on people. One of the worst stadiums, if not the worst. The stadium railings almost killing Jalen Hurts at one point mm-hmm. when he's trying to sign autographs. You have to tear down that stadium and rebuild a new one, which is going to be a multi-billion dollar in stadium that in you need Northern to build. Virginia, where it will probably be more than that. Honestly, with taxes and everything, plus you're going to try and get the city to pay for it. Which good luck with that in well, Washington. It's, it's not going to be in D.C. I don't see how they build a stadium in D.C. proper. No, it it'll be probably in Virginia, like you said, Northern Virginia. I mean, but, I mean that's part of the sale. Like, yeah. why do you think the Bears are building a new stadium before they sell the team? You're going to get more money if you build the stadium first. You've refused to fix FedEx Field. And now everybody knows the first thing you have to do as an owner is you have you, you all of a sudden are looking for land at that point. You, you don't have a choice. They have to have that agreement in place before they take over with the city and right. with the landowners because that stadium is a dump. Right. It, it, it's the old Wrigley Field discussion we've had before. Bud Selig didn't want to sell the team to Mark Cuban because Cuban was going to move it to Kane County. Which he should have. He should have moved. That team should Listen, have been moved. I love Wrigley. I'm a huge... I was there probably 50 times as a kid. I mean, I went 10 times a year to go and be a bleacher bum, pay my 20 bucks and go into the stadium. I haven't been there for since the renovations have been made, but from everything I've heard from my friends that still go to Wrigley Field all the time, it's still a dump. It was a dump when I went. It was a fun dump to go hang out in and watch a game, but it doesn't change the fact that the stadium's a dump. And the problem is it's on the National Registry at this point, so there's not much you can do with it. Right. You're landlocked, so you can't expand. So you just did the stupidest thing you can possibly do and put the bullpens where you can't even see them. And they built underneath it. And the problem with the Ricketts and everybody in Chicago should realize this at this point the Ricketts bought the team, they won the World Series, and now they're the Tribune. Oh, they, yeah, I was just going to say, they might as well be the Tribune at this point. They're not building a team. The roster they have is all glam and glitz, and I've seen this stuff before. Let's bring in Alfonso Soriano to turn the team around. It's the Dan, Dansby Swanson deal. It's like you're, you're not bringing in anybody that's going to make a huge difference. Alfonso Soriano was a bad signing from the word go. And he turned out to be a bad signing. I, you, they've made Edwin and Carcione when they did that. That was a bad signing. I can give you one that wasn't bad, though. When they brought in Nomar Garcia Parra. That was not a bad move it at that wasn't, time. It wasn't a bad trade. He played great for the second half for the Cubs. It was a bad re-signing. He was done. He was but at it, the end of his career. But at that point in the Cubs' history, they needed a name, and he still was. But that's the issue. You're just signing names to draw people in, and guess what? The team's going to suck. And you know who that is? It's like signing Corbin Burns or whatever his name was from uh, Major League. Corbin Burns was the actor. He's the actor that played. Uh, give me the third baseman's name. I can't. Uh, people are screaming. Um, people why are, am I blanking? People right are now. screaming it at us right now. Um. It'll come to I us. I know what you're talking about. Anyways, first scene, one of the first scenes of the movie, he goes, oh, I Roger forgot Dorn. Dorn. Roger I forgot Dorn. It about Dorn because he was only a name. That's what the Cubs have been doing. Right. We don't have any high. I thought you said we didn't have any high price talent. We don't. No. <laughs> it's just we just, high price. just high price. Right. 
So it's it's exactly what the Cubs are doing. I don't know why they're doing it. The Cubs should have moved when they had the chance. Again, I love Wrigley, but if you can build a better version of that in Kane County, which is the opportunity that they had right next to the airport, you're not having to take the L into Wrigley Field. Is it going to hurt Wrigleyville? Yeah, but you can build a new Wrigleyville around that area and make it better. To your point, it's still on the National Register, so Wrigley will still be there. You can do a Field of Dreams type thing. You would it would still be a viable you could, neighborhood. But, I mean, you could still play games there and everything, but there was no reason for them to stay where they are. They're stuck there now. At some point, they're moving to Arlington next to the Bears. That is going to happen. And that whole renovation was worthless. When the Rickets sell the team, it will, it will happen. Cuba would have been a good owner in Major League Baseball. He would have won. He would have won. And I mean, he the would Ricketts have... won. I'll take my World Series. I'll always be thankful for the Ricketts for the sure. Cubs World Series. That was one of the most special moments I've had in my entire life. Yours and mine both. But it's not fun to now have a team that said, well, we won one, and now we're just going to worry about money and making as much money off this team as they're, they always have. They're running it. Now they're running it as E Trade and yeah. making as much money as they can off right. of it. And that's the problem with baseball. You're going to bleed them dry. The reason that, back to the, the Jeff Bezos thing, the reason he's not selling to him is because he blames Jeff Bezos for all the criticism that he's been getting over the years. Did I you hear this? Yeah, I heard it. He, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. And yes, was he critical of it? Yeah. Was he trying to drive the price down? Probably. That's the trick. But was he writing these bad articles about the Washington football team to drive down the price so he could buy it? Clearly, Dan Snyder thinks that's the case. Here's the other question. Were the stories correct? And the answer is yes. So I'm not blaming Bezos for writing the truth. It doesn't happen very often in newspapers in America anymore. Thank God it did that in that case. I can always rely on you for some old man position on something snuck in there i appreciate it i don't think anybody disagrees with me i'm just saying i am it's too. always worth it just to hear the the one dig that you always get in you don't always Listen, have, i think it's true you could why wouldn't he do that hang there and bezos is coming in trying to look like the good guy by the way we're like oh you know what i'm gonna find a bidding company at the last minute and see if lex, i can get it in lex luther is not he, he is Lex well. Luthor. He, he is. looks like Lex Luthor. He is Lex Luthor. And talk about steroids. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> did you, have you seen his girlfriend slash wife now? <laughs> that dude is jacked as jacked can be at, at 50 something years old. What's the term I've heard? Sugar daddy? Because I think his girlfriend is about 19. She's not that young. I know he's, she's not. I, he's not uh, Leonardo DiCaprio here. Okay. Yeah. Leo's getting a little old for that. He, he's been a little old at this point let's not we're gonna throw everybody under the bus in this episode i'm good with well. i mean we, we might going. as well just run with it you start i continue <laughs> i'm not blaming either of them for it it's just weird to me you've got the money by never mind. way to stop on that one holy buckets here's a question i have for you though yes, because sir. i do think that rogers should end up in washington because i think it's the perfect fit especially with a new owner i think it's still san francisco also a good fit there's another trade that's been thrown out there, which is interesting. I, I can't imagine. It's with Lamar Jackson, all right? And Lamar Jackson is obviously more interested in getting paid at this point. Sure. And the I don't blame him. I don't either. But he's more interested in getting paid than winning, in, in my opinion. He's going to go wherever that paycheck is. It's that $230 million mark. 231 minimum is what he wants. He wants 250 Right. He's not going to get it. Guaranteed money. Somebody's going to pay. I've heard a lot of trade talk about Lamar Jackson and a Justin Field swap and Lamar Jackson playing for the Bears. The Bears will pay that money for him. Bears will pay it, but they still don't have an offensive line. That's my question. Like From the conversations we just had about building an offensive line, Lamar Jackson, I mean, he's been playing against not a great offensive line sure. in, in Baltimore, but it's better than the offensive line he's been having to deal with it, that he would have to deal with in Chicago. You know where I, and I'll say this about Jackson or Rodgers, where either one of them should go is Miami. It, but again, it's Rodgers is there to try and win another Super Bowl. He right? can win in Miami. Lamar Jackson's not at that point in his career right no. now. Lamar Jackson's coming off his rookie deal, and he wants to get his big paycheck because he's going to be franchise tagged and not play. He will sit out the year. 
uh, Miami will pay him. Miami will, but it has to be a trade that goes to that. Miami will definitely pay him. The Justin Fields ones make that sense because I think Justin Fields in Baltimore, you're all of a sudden going to see what Justin Fields is capable of doing. You're Lamar that- Jackson and the Bears, it, he, I think he's good for a couple more wins. I, I do, but your team is still trash. Jackson's got to move. Here's the thing. As soon as he signs for 231 or whatever he gets, right. He'll if get 250. If you're Patrick Mahomes, what are you worth then? Cuz right now he's like million? Yeah, exactly. I I've, mean, he's already been paid. I've said it before. Well, no, he's like number 6 on the list right now. For yearly for compensation. Year compensation. Yeah, he's still total. Got a 500 million dollar okay. contract. I still say, and I've said this several times, what the NFL needs to do is break off one player, whether it's quarterback, and if you've got a running back or a wide receiver you want to do it, it's fine. They're off the salary cap. Correct. You pay them what you want. MLS rules. That's yes. what MLS does. You have one player that does not count against your salary cap, but you can pay them whatever you want. That's how they get the European stars to come into it. It's what the NFL has got to do because there's too much talk about just what they're going to pay the quarterbacks at this point. And it, it actually hurts. If I'm on that team, I'm going, yeah, without me, you're you're nothing, yet you're getting all the money. And I know quarterbacks are just that. that way. I don't think they do look at it that way. Some of them do. I'm sure some of them do, but that's how life goes. It's a quarterback-driven league. Sure. The quarterbacks are going to get the most amount of money. That's how it goes. It is how it goes, but I... And yes, they drive the, they drive the play on the field, but I'm tired of hearing about just their contracts. Just take them off, right? Whatever deal you want. Yeah, you'll still hear about the contracts because they'll get higher and higher at that point. But, I mean, honestly, I, you know me. I have no issues with players wanting a piece of the pie when billionaires are running the teams and making all the money. I have no problem. If you, their careers are so short, with the exception of the quarterbacks now, especially with the quarterback rules, go get what you can get. Right. Get as much as you can, when you can. I have no problem with Lamar Jackson going through what he's going through. It's going to be an interesting saga, and I think the Bears make sense. I think you will see a draft day trade with Lamar Jackson. They're going to franchise him come March 15th. He sits out. They're going to have to trade him. I think this could, be, this could be an interesting draft day. Honestly, if, if the Baltimore can do it, they need to make the trade before draft day. Because if he refuses to sign that franchise tag, then what are you going to do? It's like Rodgers. If he really says, I don't want to come back, make the trade. I sell him to... Uh, San Francisco, going back home, you can probably get the most draft capital because they can make a move to get it. And away you go. You just go and get whatever you can get for them. You're going to get two firsts, a second or a third. Right. You're not going to get the four firsts that they reportedly were offered a few years ago. You're not. We'll see. He's out of the darkness now, and I'm going to stop talking about him. All right, let's and move if on. if you guys agree that you're tired of the Rodgers conversation, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it. Have you watched any of spring training yet? Not one inning. So I have. I love baseball. I do, too. I like checking it out. I and the new watch. rules. I've watched the highlights of the new rule, especially the clock. It's interesting. What do you think? Honestly, I don't have a problem with it. I think you've got to force. I'm. There's a guy. The original human rain delay. Was yeah. Toby Hara. Sure. He's the guy who started pulling the gloves and move, touching the hat and right. doing whatever. It took him 30 seconds to get in. Nomar Garcia Parra, speaking of him, took it to an all new level, and that's what the players were doing when I was growing up. Guys would have one foot in the box and look down at third base, get their sign, and they were back in, and it'd be done in less than eight seconds. Correct. Now you have to have a clock on it. I mean, you watch Pete Rose back in the day. I don't think he was ever out of the box. Like you said, he, he barely took a foot out, got a signal, and got back in and was ready to go. Correct. And it's time to play the game. What I really like about this is it puts the power back with the pitcher where it belongs. That's what Scherzer's saying. He says he loves it because it gives the power back to the pitcher, and it does. So in, in case... Nobody knows what the, the rule changes are, so you have 20 seconds if nobody's on base for a pitcher to make the pitch. The batter has to be ready with a minimum of eight seconds left. So if you're past that eight-second mark, it's seven seconds, and you're not ready to hit, they call it a strike. If you don't make the pitch within 20 seconds, you call it, it gets called a ball. You go from there. Even if it's a strikeout or a walk, that's the call. I like the rule. I do. I do, too. Been working so far. I'm going to get into those stats in just a second here. 
you know what? I'm going to get into these stats now because I'm going to go off on another rule here. Good plan. So it's, it's been an interesting time with it so far. There's been a lot of violations. So in 16 games this past Sunday, there were 35 clock violations, 27 by pitchers, 8 by hitters. The total for spring Friday to Sunday so far, 35 games total. It's averaging 1.97 per game, almost two per game, 69 clock violations in the first three days of, of spring training. Very similar to what happens when you change a rule in the NFL. It takes a while for the players to catch up to it. It does. This is the first time they're seeing it. Mm -hmm. People freaked out about the game ending with the Braves game on a clock violation. Listen, it's spring training, number one. Right. Who cares? The umps are still getting used to it, too. But listen, if you're not going to be ready, you're going to be ready to cost your team the game. And the, and the peer pressure on that, if somebody actually does cost them a game because of a clock violation, right. I don't even want to know what they do to them in the clubhouse. The changes have been good so far. So a spring training game average was three hours last year. So far, it's two hours and 39 minutes. So it's been brought down by 21 minutes per game, which is a lot of time. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when the regular games start and you get the TV play in. With all the commercials, I don't want, I want the games to be like two hours and 30 minutes is what they should be at the most. It's exactly what they should be. I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. These games should be two and a half hours. It's what it was from 75 to 88. It, they were two and a half hours long. Now you have World Series games going six hours long, which is absolutely ridiculous. Well, this is a better change and a step in the right direction. And probably the first thing Rob Manfred's done right in his entire time of being a commissioner. Yeah, because the, the no more shift is a stupid rule. I'm not even a big fan of the extra large bases. So let's Whatever. talk about the extra large bases. Check this out right here. You can see a picture on the screen right now. It's 15 inches to 18 inches, a three square inch difference. That's a big base. That's a big base. Steals are up by 44% this spring. There's a shock. 44%. Again. I go back to, you don't need to change the basics of the game. You need to have your players learning to do their jobs better. I get what have I been saying though from the word go. This change should have been made a few years ago with the change of in in what is it called in the in the neighborhood in the neighborhood rule was changed. You have to make that change so people don't get hurt because you're you're now having way too much space on the bag. I wouldn't mind if they would have done it at second base only. Because it is the in the neighborhood, it's a more dangerous base. There's no reason to do it at first base. There's no reason to do it at third. I agree. Well, it takes away the risk of people getting stepped on. More. Oh, well, these are professionals. They know where the base is. Why don't we just put the little red extension on the first base so that there's no chance of anybody getting in yeah. the way? Old man rules, man. That's little league rules. Yeah, it's old man softball rules. It's. No, we didn't play with that. We actually knew how to play the game. We, oh, I did when I played soccer. Of course. That's, it wasn't my fault. It's how the field was designed. Anyways. I, it, dude, it took me forever to figure out how that thing worked. I didn't know what that base was for until I got called out. The only <laughs> thing not touching the right I'm base. surprised baseball didn't put in a T line at third base. When you go past it, you have to go home. Well, Which would have been a stupid rule. But I don't like the shift because these are professional players. The shift the rule shift. change bothers me as well. So now the shift is you, you can bring in an outfielder to be in the infield. You can. That can still happen like it's been happening, but you, you have to have two people on each side of the base. I'm with you. You, you are getting paid millions of dollars to hit a damn ball. Learn how to hit it the other Thank way. Thank you. Like If you can't learn how to hit it the other way, then you probably shouldn't be paid that much money. You have an whole off scene to work on it. This is what you're getting paid to do. Figure it out. I don't get an excuse in life where I'm getting paid to do something and I can't figure it out so the rules get changed in my favor. That's not how it works. That's not how life works. If you can't hit it to the left side of the field, then guess what? You're a risk to your team. Exactly. You're exactly. going to have to either learn how to hit home runs every single time or you're going to have to learn how to hit it to the other Why side. Why did I field. always tell you when you came to bitch about something? That's a you problem. Yeah. It 100% is, and it, it should have been listed as a U problem for baseball, but it's baseball, again, not understanding what made the game so popular for so long. In 1998, as fun as that summer was, and as much as all those players should be in the Hall of Fame, uh -huh. no, as much as those players should be in the Hall of Fame Absolutely for not. what they did for the game of baseball, they, they, 
it helped ruin the game of baseball because it changed the way the commissioner, Bud Selig's a part of this problem too. Sure. Bud Selig and Rob Manfred for thinking people want to see home runs. They don't. And you know, I don't know proof of that because nobody paid attention to Aaron judge until he got almost to 60 home runs. Well, we it can wasn't blame a story till he was at 57 homers. Blame the cheater for that in a big way. I'm not even saying about that part. I'm and saying that cheated. proves right there that people are not as interested in seeing home runs. People are more interested in seeing pitcher duels. What brought people to the ballpark? What was when I was a kid, especially, it was always talked about, hey, you're going to see Randy Johnson versus Greg Maddox. This is Kerry Wood versus Roger Clemens. You can't miss this game. Right. That was the conversation until really 10 years ago. Even when it was Carlos Zimbrano, he was a must see game to see what he could do on the mound. Was it fun to see Greg Maddox? Face some of the greatest hitters in the game? Absolutely, because he could make them look foolish. He was a pitcher's pitcher. So was Randy Johnson. He could blow them away. I mean, one of the best things uh, was an all-star game where when Johnson was still with Seattle and he had to face John Crook. Yes. Crook couldn't even get in the box. He was so afraid of him. It was that old wild thing. I just don't know where it's going to go. Right. I mean, and that was the problem. Johnson was wild at that time. Not as wild as people thought. He still could kill a bird. And he struck out Truck on three pitches, and he never got his foot in the ba- in the box. You, you've ruined the game by not focusing on the pitcher. Mm-hmm. The NFL did a good job by realizing the quarterbacks are the stars. The NBA did a good job changing it to be about the stars. In Major League Baseball, you completely misunderstood who the stars were of your game and why people were going and why people were tuning in. They were not tuning in. Why would you tune in to see a batter who hits three to four times a game that takes up of a two at that let's say it's 239 at this point of the 200 of the two hours 200 <coughs> slow down clearly this is upsetting me of the two hours and 39 minutes that player that you want people to focus on is hitting for maybe 10 minutes of that should be about three minutes right in there and hit i'm saying all their hits though are going to take about oh, 10 sure. minutes where people were tuning in to watch a whole game was for the pitchers. It makes it doesn't even make any sense for you to think, well, they want to see people hit the baseball. They want to see these stars to the stars are their hitters. They're in for less of the game than any other player. Like they're just not there very often where the pitchers are touching the ball all the time. Clearly, that's the person you want focused on because they're the ones that are always in control of the game. And you've taken that away. You have taken it away, and the problem is, and I'm blaming guys like Craig Council, I'm going to bring him up again, have changed the game from focusing on pitching to just throwing. It's go out and throw 100 miles an hour. Well, that's not how the game is played. Teach these guys how to pitch so they can go six, seven innings. That's when it's interesting because now you're going to have to face these guys coming around two or three times. The best part of watching Reggie Jackson when he was batting was that chess match between a pitcher, okay, I've seen you, and the pitcher's trying to figure out, okay, he's seen this, I've got to throw him something else. Right. That's where people got excited, you know, talking about Craig Council. He doesn't want uh, pitchers or batters to see the same pitcher the third time around. That's when it's exciting, because now they figured each other out, and now you actually get to see what people have. And also, speaking of Craig Council, by the way, I realized you've gotten rid of all your Brewers stuff. Welcome to the <laughs> Cubs side. I'm still so angry about what they did to Corbin Burns and what Council did to Corbin Burns. As you should be, because the Brewers are terrible human beings. The rule that makes me the most upset to this day, and it's where baseball doesn't understand the problem, is the pickoff rule. Yeah, this is a stupid rule. Now, I get where you're coming from on this, but this is as bad as the shift rule, right? Now, no. some people get ridiculous with a step off. You shouldn't be able to... St- not be able to you shouldn't step off 10 times like that's stupid but at this point you can step off the rubber twice if you step off a third time you either get the guy out or he takes a base it's a i don't sh- agree with the taking the base part i think that's a ridiculous rule you are taking away so much strategy yes if you've got a fast runner we're going to go back in the day if ricky henderson was on first you're going to throw over there three four five times but that was part of the fun of it it was the fun of it let this part of the strategy of the game. Now, if I'm that runner, I'm trying to do anything to get him to throw over twice. Nothing's and more then, exciting than a pitcher stepping off 10 times 
and the guy steals the base anyways. I've been at games where that happens, yes. where the guy keeps stepping off, stepping off, and the guy steals second anyway. It's the most exciting thing in baseball, no matter if it's the opposing team or the home team. If it's the home team, you're going to hear the crowd go nuts. Correct. And it just lights the place up. And I love the booze when it's not the home team. It's Correct. part of the fun of the game. It's a it pitcher versus a, not only the batter now, but also the runner. By just putting in two throw, throws over, there's no strategy in that. Well, and now you're taking away the job of the catcher. What makes Wilson Contreras so great in this game is that he can throw to second a frozen rope. A frozen rope. Molina could throw from second or throw two second from whole plate. Frozen rope. That was their job. You'd trust your catcher in those situations. You know what else both of those guys could do? They could snap a throw down the first if the right. guy got too big a lead. That's gone. It's gone. And they're taking away all of the strategy of the game. And if I look, I caught that was half the fun was that chess match that you had to play between the pitcher, the first baseman, the runner. And it could I snap a throw back down to first base to try to pick somebody off if you got too big a lead and wasn't coming back quick enough? I've seen it happen dozens of times over the years. Wilson Contreras does it five times a year because he's that good. Right. Molina did it all the time. But Molina was, well, he's a Hall of Famer. Right. He may be the second greatest catcher to ever speaking of hall of famer i have a problem with the hall of fame of baseball oh god no one those roid people should not be let those guys in no i want to see them in the hall of fame we need to celebrate that era of baseball put in a put in an outhouse and put them all in there in the dead ball era stars you need to put in they were the greatest greatest stars stars from that time and they didn't cheat when they did it sure they did they had to use the same ball the entire time i consider that cheating Part of the rules of the time. Steroids were part of the rules no. of the time. Everybody was using no. it. Put him in the hall. Steroids of were well, illegal in the Americas. Take away my childhood. Yeah. You, you boomers do everything you can already to take away my childhood. Don't take away my childhood for baseball. Have I taken away the Animaniacs? Yeah, you did. I did not. I love the Animaniacs. You did. They took away Pepe Le Pew and, and the little mouse for me, so deal with it. Don't take away Speedy my Gonzalez. childhood. Gonzalez. It's mean. So, we have the Hall of Fame, and I have a problem when it comes to caps. Fred McGriff goes in without a cap. Shouldn't. Greg should Maddox went in without a cap. Should have been a brave. I think that you just shouldn't wear a cap. No. You wear Hall of Fame. Your should bust it, should be remembered as you, not for They the don't team. have a bust in the Hall of Fame. They have plaques. Plaques. Football has a bust. With no helmet on. Smoke, I apologize. Well, you should just have your plaque. It's no. about you, not about the team. It's that certain. way Andre Dawson isn't stuck as an expo. He's it's in. all about remember the team. him as a cub. The players should be able to name their You have their your team. own team Hall of Fames. Cubs have their own Hall of Fame. Yankees got their own Hall no. of Fame. You should have your own team Hall of Fame, same way the Packers do. Nope. You remember for being a great player, not for who you played for. Yeah, a lot of it is they tied to who, off people's heads. A lot of times they should be recognized for who they played for. The cap conversation is stupid. No, I really think it is. The way well, Boggs cap conversation is stupid. stupid. Okay. Boggs is the reason that this whole thing has ever come up because he signed in his contract to go in with a Devil Ray hat, and he never should have been allowed to do that. He should have went in as a Boston Red Sox. Or he just period. goes in as Wade Boggs because that's who's going in the Hall of Fame is Wade Boggs. You God, just don't go in with a cap. It's not a problem. Guys should be able to pick their hats, but it's got to be the team they're remembered for. Maddox is the one guy. He should have went in as a Brave. I think he should go in as Brave. That's where he's won the Cy Young. It, the, most of the Cy Youngs, that's where he won his World Series. He wanted to go in as a Cub. And I know. Like baseball said, no. Nah. No. It, for good reason. Andre Dawson was the other one. That's a legit one. He should have been able to choose because he was there for both teams for the same length of time. Well, he, he, won his, Cub. he was a Hall of Famer as a Cub. He wasn't a Hall of Famer as an Expo. He was a Hall point. of Famer as a Cub. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. I love that he still is willing to pay to redo the plaque on his own pocket. Yeah, he should be able to or that you should just redo them and not have caps on there no Babe Ruth is known as the Red Sox and a Yankee more as a no. Yankee but he's known as a Red Sox he's too he's in there with a Yankee hat yeah as I he understand should. that as he should he played for several different teams Fred McGriff played for everybody Fred McGriff is a brave that's how you remember him that's how everybody remembers him I mean I saw him as a cub that was but a I didn't know him as a yeah. brave he was really I mean Fred McGriff played for what 20 something years he yeah. was in the league for a long time. He was. Gaylord Perry is the one guy legitimately no hat because I think he played for 
every team in Major League Baseball. Well, you just don't put hats on people. I, you do put the hats on people. I think it's dumb. I don't like the conversation. You go in as a player. It's not to represent. It's selfish for baseball to be like, well, it's about your team. It's not about your team. It's about that player being one of the greatest of all time. Sure. That You're, person should be in. Robin doesn't Young, matter who they played for. Robin Young should be in with a brewer hat symbol on. Paul the Molitor, team he played for. Paul Molitor should be in as a brewer. No, not he a should Blue be in as a Blue Jay. No. He isn't as a brewer. He is in a brewer, and that's where he belongs. Because or he just goes in without a cap on because it's about him being a Hall of Famer, not what team he played for. Again, you're being just ridiculous. I don't get the cap thing. Like, just put that player belongs in. It should play, be that player play and the, his face. Play the game at that Nobody le- else ever does it. Play the game at that level, and you'll have a very deep affinity for the hat you wear. I mean, that's never going to happen. Uh, I know, but I'm just saying. I never played at the level. I wasn't even close to good enough. But if I would have gotten to the show, I would have wore, and I was that good. I'd be like Johnny Bench if he would have went someplace else to end the career. He's a Cincinnati Red. Sure. And he should wear that hat. Or just go in because he's no. one of the best players to ever play the game. It has nothing to do with what team he played You're for. No matter ridiculous. where he played, he was going to be a Hall of Famer. It has nothing to do with the team. It has everything to do with the player. You're Period. Be- no. He needs to go in wearing the hat they want. I have another players, question for you, actually. The players earned that spot. The players should pick their hat. I'm moving off, off this because you're, you're wrong. wrong. I have another question for you because this is an interesting one, a conversation you and I actually have actually gotten in severe arguments about, which is should cities be able to retire of the number of a player that played in their city even if that team moved. So you look at the Braves, right? The Braves were in Boston. Mm -hmm. The Braves were in Milwaukee, and now they're in Atlanta. There are a lot of Hall of Fame players, Warren Spahn, Eddie Matthews, Hank Aaron, who played in Milwaukee and are very well remembered in Milwaukee, yet they uh, do not have their numbers retired in Milwaukee because they didn't play for the Brewers. They played for the Braves. Should the Brewers be able to retire Warren Spawn and Eddie Matthews? Yes. Because the people in Atlanta never saw them play. They no. have no affinity for those players. The Braves, Milwaukee does. Bur- Philadelphia Phillies is an, or not Philadelphia Phillies, I'm the talking Oakland about Oakland A's. A's are another one. They played in Philadelphia for a long time. And there's a lot of Philadelphia A's that are in the Hall of Fame. Should Philadelphia be able to retire those numbers for those players? Yes. It, it, there's very few franchises this affects. The Braves and the A's are the two They're the most big extreme. Because they but could it, also do that in Kansas City. The A's were in Kansas City for a while, too. They could. I don't know if there were any players at that point that were really Hall of Fame worthy that before they know. moved. I don't know. But Milwaukee specifically still has a love affair with the Milwaukee Braves. That is yeah, still it's Milwaukee the team, team that won a championship. It's not just because of that. I mean, sure. it's because of the team. It's because of the Johnny Logans. It's because of the Red Chain Dinks played in Milwaukee at that time. I have it's, no idea what that He's more of a Cardinal, but he was also a Brave during the World Series run. Warren Spahn, obviously. Eddie Matthews. Right. I mean, I think we're talking about three guys. I mean, Hank Aaron played for the Brewers, so it's that's retired. Sure. But we're talking Eddie Matthews and Warren Spahn specifically. Right. Those numbers should be able to be retired in Milwaukee because the Milwaukee Braves meant more to the city of Milwaukee during that period. And it was really before my time, but I've heard all the stories growing up. They drew three million people before anybody else correct i mean the milwaukee the 1957 milwaukee braves are arguably according to you and my grandfather are arguably the greatest team of all time i mean they, the discussion. they beat the yankees they did they they, they beat, were a powerhouse in the 50s that was and the then mickey, lost to them the next year it was the mickey mantle era yankees the yogi bear was still on the team and on and on and on I, I ended up getting a gift for my grandfather before he passed away um, that was a great gift, by the way. Yeah, so I found he he took his dad to the World Series, and he told me the story when I was visiting him down when we were both living down in Florida at that time. And he told me a story about how one of the proudest moments was he got to take his dad to one of the like Game Four of the 1957 World Series. And I found the program for Game Four of 1957 of the World Series, the game he took his dad to, and and gave it to him as a gift as as I found that. My grandfather's not an emotional man. He was not. That was a happy moment for me because he, he, was, he was very excited about that gift. But I looked through that program with him. There were a lot of... Hall, there was like 13 Hall of Famers in that World Series. 
I think between the umpires and the two teams and the managers and the right. coaches, yeah, I think it's it thirteen been, Hall of Famers. Yeah, we counted it out. It's an it was an amazing series. But getting back to the point, I think there's very few. But and you know, the Washington Senators are another one. Yeah, they should moved the to Nationals, Texas. Should the Nationals be able to retire the uh, Boog Paul, or not Boog Paul, but Frank Howard? Yeah, they should. He was a Washington Senator. They should be able to retire him. I think the Braves should be able to retire Spawn and Matthews. Brewers, you mean? Whatever. Braves did retire him. The, the Braves did retire him. The Brewers should be able to retire Milwaukee. And I think Philadelphia should be able to retire some of the Philadelphia A's who were there for decades and decades. Yeah, I mean, they were a dead ball era, so it doesn't really count. But Would you stop with you that? Know, if you want to retire players like that, go for it, I guess. You only say that to get under my skin, and you're dead 100%. wrong about it. I truly believe that well, dead ball era stats are a different game. Nobody and cares be what you different. believe. Can we not to get not to be like this? That's my point about those teams. I don't think Milwaukee should retire a Boston Brave. Babe Ruth should not be retired in Milwaukee just because you didn't play in Milwaukee. That defeats the purpose. Correct. Boston, if there's no Boston Braves, I don't think the Red well, the Red Sox should retire Babe Ruth. But Let's move on, because I want to talk about something even more important. We had a conversation on our very first show about how to fix baseball. Bud oh, Se yeah, we were going to talk about this, and Bud I went off. Bud Selig did something. He did some things really well. He did one thing very, very badly, and that was he regionalized baseball. It's he no did. longer a national game. To be fair, he had to at that he time. He did, because they had to get money back in, and he got a lot of money back in. However... It's time to fix baseball. These rules aside, and there's really only one that I really like. The pitch lock rule is great. That's great. Other than that, these are five rules we came up with. We posted them on our very first show and we talked about it. It's time to revisit it. We can fix baseball in one fell swoop and make it an exciting national game where everybody's going to watch it again and everybody's going to be sitting on the edge of their seats to watch the games again. I'll let you run through them if you can remember them. Yeah, I can remember them. And I actually have a change where I want to make one update to it. Okay. One ahead. of them was a DH, right? And the DH is already in place. Which is wrong. They no, it's not. It's the evolution of the game. It's where the game yes. was going. You Correct. make the change as part of the evolution of the game. Correct. Let's you make some, the change. That's why they have the bigger bases, because we're just going to do softball now and have the home run hitting contest, whatever. Bring back pitchers hitting. I say bring pitchers back into the game. Clearly, I don't think that. I still think having the DH in there was a great move, okay. especially if it's going to become more about the pitchers, which is what I think that's going to lead to. Let the pitchers hit. Okay, moving on from that one, because it already happened. Good job, baseball. Bad job. The other one is one that has been coming up more and more, which we sent this letter out to Bud Selig back 10 ago. years ago yeah. uh, with, with these exact same ideas. It's changing the divisions. Right now, it's five. No, it's three. It's three five-team divisions. That's what I meant to say. It's three five-team divisions. Lower those divisions to five three-team divisions. It, it worked in the NFL because they had five-team divisions. They went down to four. This is moving it more to three. Okay. Let me play devil's advocate because you and I have both heard this. Right. Oh, if you do that, then it's just it's watered down and nobody's going to watch the games. And Who would want a three-team division? Go. You're building up the rivalries to be more what, than what they've ever had, which is huge within a division. Because you could all have losing records. One of the divisions we had was Colorado, Seattle, and Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Listen, those guys haven't been historically great teams. They're never in it, but somebody has to go. You are firing up those fan bases, and you're telling me that those fans of those teams aren't going to be paying attention to what Colorado and Kansas City are doing all the time? We talked about the Brewers, the Twins, and the Blue Jays all that aren't in all the time, but all of a sudden they have a better chance of winning, they're going to be much more engaged. And you look at a division like Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Detroit, that would have had three separate teams in three different years. Correct. You look at the Mets, the Yankees, and the Red Sox, only one gets in, because that's the other rule we have in there, is you have to win to get in. Only five team gets in. You have to win your division. No more of this nonsense where the second best record, listen, you tried it, it doesn't work. Baseball is about winning. That's why they celebrate as much as they do about winning divisions. Baseball is the only sport that does that. The fact that you celebrate a wild card win when you weren't the best team in your division, get out of here. 
It's no, the old, win your division. It's the old Herm Edwards line. You have to win the game. And Correct. that's what baseball was always predicated on. You have to win your division Bring to get winning in. winning back. And this also takes teams like the Orioles, because you're going to have a division where you have Atlanta, you have Miami, and you have Washington, which is very winnable for all three teams. The Marlins can't sit in the basement anymore. Correct. You're going to get paid attention to. That can't happen anymore. You're going to have another division where who do we put uh, uh, Baltimore with? Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. There's two teams in Pittsburgh and Baltimore that like this revenue sharing bullshit a whole a lot. lot. Because they're just getting money and not having to put good teams on the field. These teams are going to have to be sold then because you have to win to get in. And if you're just going to let Philadelphia win all the time, you can't hide anymore. You can't hide. Eventually, you're going to have to win. Right. You only have you have a one third chance every single year. It's going to make free agency more exciting. It's going to tamper down the trade deadline for sure, because you're going to need players for the future. You're not going to trade stars the way that you are, which, by the way, I've heard the argument and I'm going to hear it again that, well, the trade deadline is the most exciting thing in baseball. That's, that's pathetic. That is. That's so sad. You, you mean the most exciting time in baseball is when half the league gives up right after the all-star break? That's the most exciting part of baseball when you're giving up on your franchise and trading your star players that you fans love watching. That's the most exciting part of baseball. No, the most exciting part of baseball should be free agency when you're getting new players in and you have a one third chance of winning. That will work and it will make it more exciting nationally, too, because now you're going to pay attention to who you're playing against in the division. Yeah, you want to know, OK, what's happening in L.A., L.A. and San Diego or San Francisco. Right. That was our division. That's going to be a real, these divisions are going to be real competitive. The other argument we've heard against, and everybody, and this is from, you accuse me of being a purist. Well, these leagues have been in existence since the beginning of time. You can't break them up. We're, that ship has sailed with well, the DH in both leagues, whether we like it or not, and I don't, for the record, he does. He's an idiot. But as long as that's happened, the leagues don't matter anymore. Do what the NFL did in 1970s, wing them together. And let's just put the best divisions together and not worry. You can still call it American National League if you want to. Yeah, you'll but, switch a couple of teams around. I mean, we did, but you can divide them up either way. It's going to be better for the game. It's going to make it more exciting. It's going to make the game that much better. And you're going to pay attention to it a lot more, especially when it comes playoff times. Because, hey, if you're a Colorado fan and you get in, even though you had a 500 record, you can still win this That's thing. That's right. You get You're hot. in the playoffs. You get in, you get hot at the right time. You could come back and win. And imagine what somebody like Bet US would do with this kind of thing. Can you imagine the odds going into each season? It would be absolutely unbelievable. I'd get more into gambling. I've already have a little bit because Bet US has that great promotion and I 100% took advantage of it. As did I. As you should. But you, all of a sudden you have Colorado in there. And fans are paying attention. What happens all the time in football? A six seed all of a sudden takes off and, and wins the Super Bowl. Those guys didn't belong, but they were there and they got hot at the right time. The difference is the wild card works for football. It doesn't work for baseball. You have to win. It's too much about winning and it's too important to the game to be about winning. And that's where the divisions come in where you have five teams in the playoffs. The other big one that I like and I never explain well Go ahead. So I'm going to do it the best I can is you get one pitching change during an, an in play inning. So during a half inning, right? You still don't explain this I, well. I'm so bad at okay. explaining this. What it you're works trying in my to brain. Say, at right now, you can have a dozen pitching changes and that slows down the game. The change he's advocating, and I think is actually a good idea because it is a lot of strategy. A team can make one in inning pitcher change. Per game. That's it. You can change it. You can change the pitchers at the end of the inning as much as you want. But Correct. the manager can only walk to the mound and take a pitcher out once. While while game is in play. I think it's the best way to put it. Yeah. While while the game is in play, if you if the inning's over and you want to make the change, you can do that nine times. That's what I just said. I know I'm just re explaining it, but while a game is in play, you can only make barring injury. And I've heard that excuse before. Well, you're going to have a lot of injuries that are going to be faked then. No, you're not. No, you're not. Pitchers don't get hurt that much. And you know what? If that's the case and you, you just simply make it where, hey, you can have one change per injury, you do it again, 
Well, it costs you your pitching change. That, I mean, or, it is what it is. That or if a guy fakes has an injury, he's got to sit out his next start. There, that fixes it. You're done. It exactly. Now you're good. They have to sit out the next five games or whatever you want to make. You're gonna it miss to be. your next start, so you're not gonna pitch for ten days. If you get taken off the mound due to injury, you're automatically on a fifteen day DL. Correct. Easy to it's fix. Done. It, it's a done deal. But it takes ten minutes to change a pitcher. Ten minutes to change a pitcher. That's insane. You see the games are down two thirty nine now. Make this change. They're gonna go down to two hours and fifteen minutes. That's an awesome game to watch. Well, and what I do like about this is if you're going to have the DH, you've taken away a lot of the strategy that the manager used to have by pulling guys in and you take you do the double shift. This would force those kind of situations back in because if all of a sudden you're pulling your pitcher, you may want to make another change at the same time. It's just strategy that's put back in the game. Correct. Different than historically, but strategy nonetheless. And you're going to force your starters to go longer. And it's going to force Hell you to think Louis about, that. are you going to let that pitcher pitch that last at, at that last batter and more importantly are you going to have a thrower learn to pitch correct it's going to force people to learn how to pitch again there's no i'm taking you out after one batter you face that doesn't exist anymore because you only get to do that once while game is in play it's like going back to raleigh fingers who used to come in and granted yeah call me old school but raleigh fingers goose gossage when those guys came in the relief in the 70s they right. would come in in the seventh inning correct. they would see these guys twice correct and they were still brilliant. That's what, Pitchers that, are the stars of the game. This makes it more of that. And again, you're getting these innings over. And here's the thing. You get rocked in the first inning. You have a choice to make. Either you use your one pitching change in the first inning. Or you let that pitcher figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then, if he does figure it out, okay, I've got one change. Do I wait to bring in the Mariano Rivera's of the world? At the very last, when I've got them against one or two pitchers, it is a lot of thinking that has to go on. Yes. And that's what I like. Baseball's always about strategy. Well, and you put the game back in the actual manager's hands where they have to think about what they're doing throughout. You don't need as many pitchers as you did before. It, that's one change I want to see. I want one other change. No iPads, no computers allowed in the dugout, but that's a separate story. Go on with your next rule. Team. Why? I hate Moneyball. I hate Moneyball, too. Yeah, the analytics That's why. Is, is crazy. But, I mean, how many... There was always managers that had a hunch, right? They knew sure. the stats even back in the day and, and made decisions based off of stats of players against That pitchers. was this computer. It not, was, but there's no this. different having it written down. Cool. It's, I don't mind that. I think you're wrong on that one completely. Well, if you think I'm wrong, put it in the comments. And while you're down there, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as as we enjoy making it. That's teamwork. Going on to the next rule change. So the next rule change was the DH. We don't have that anymore. But I've changed it now, where you need to put sensors in the plate that light up. You are not going to, no. Absolutely not. That light up when the ball crosses the plate. Fire Angel Hernandez and train the rest of the umpires I to just, do their job well. This is why I wanted to bring this up. Because I you don't just, understand why you're so against this. You are for this in any other sport. You love it in hockey. I do. You love the idea for football at the goal line. I do. How do you not like this in baseball? Because I think the umpires in baseball overall do a really good job if they're trained properly and if they're positioned properly. But it takes, a mis it takes something out of the game where all of a sudden right. that it lights up. It takes a lot out of the game by having those sensors there. It doesn't take it out of the game. I, mean, I meant it takes a lot of thinking out of the umpire's head where they just get to look up and down and make a decision. Nope. I think it's better for the game. I think you're dead wrong. I think I trust the umpires. I think it, it, they are great at what they do, and calling balls and strike is an integral part of the My game. My thought is even you add a sensor on there that senses the bat, so when it gets halfway across, oh, Jesus God. you'll know what the check swings are. Yeah. Oh, no. Can we at least have some human element and some sport and some game? And it makes a quick decision. You don't have to sit here and think about this all day long. Oh, yeah. You go like this. And the umpire goes, no, or out, and it's done. Right, but they're wrong sometimes. They're hardly ever wrong on a check swing. They're wrong a lot in the strike zone. Because, number one, you've got Angel Hernandez screwing things up. Number two, you've we got them. We can blame him, but it's not just him. It's a lot of them. 
It's but not how a lot can of you like this in hockey? Because I know you love it in hockey. I, you, we talked in length about why you love it in football. Baseball's got more dimensions to the area. It's you got a five six guy for one team. You got a six right. foot six guy for another. The up and down. No, the up and down is on on the umpire. Nope. But across the plate doesn't change. Nope. Don't like it. Why? Because it's a stupid rule. I trust the umpires. They you're good to put them back behind the catcher where they belong. They can see the whole plate. They can see up and down, and they can make a call. But why wouldn't Bring you them. want that? I don't understand how you can like this for other sports and not like this in the baseball. N the NFL, you've got a thousand. You've got what twenty four guys, and there are twenty two guys that all weigh about eight hundred pounds. You can't see anything. So the football getting across the line that makes sense. In the hockey, hockey, you see it. There's a camera right there. You see it cross all the time. They yeah, still have it light up because it makes a quick decision. Yeah, a hockey, there's no umpire to make a call. It's either in or it's out. And you still need the refs to, in hockey to see it. And they weren't seeing hockey, it, which is why they added the no, sensor. It's the, a quick decision. The hockey done. officials are nowhere near the goal usually. If they had somebody sitting right behind it, they could make the call, but they don't. Baseball's got a stationary umpire right behind the catcher. He can make the call, train them better. I just we'll don't find think, out what I don't happens. Understand how it's a bad Triple, idea. Triple A will make the judge. Last two, last so two are the, the, I agree with. I'm holding on to the last one, but this this next one is is simple. You need to move up the time of your playoff game. The starting nine o'clock Eastern time bullshit needs to stop. They've lost one generation. They're about to lose two generations. You're taking a ton of people because here's the thing: your games are are during the week half the time. And I can't stay up for those. I got work in the morning. So does everybody else. Your games should start, especially playoff games, should start no later than 6 o'clock Eastern time. And baseball should be brought back to Saturday afternoons for playoff games. Correct. And it, they're going, well, there's football. Well, learn to compete, for Christ's sakes. Make a better product so people are going to choose you over football. Don't right. just give up to football. You, you need to start these games earlier. You're losing crowd. I mean... I remember living in Florida when these games would start nine o'clock Eastern time. What time were we watch it? What time were we up until two to in the watch morning. the Cup? Yeah. And granted there was game a rain seven. there was a rain delay, but it still would have been one o'clock. Yeah. It, it you need to start these games earlier. You're losing an audience. You're too worried about the West Coast. Well, guess what? Six o'clock Eastern time is what is it on the Western Coast? I was Six o'clock is four o'clock in the afternoon. And you know what? They've got the thing about baseball. It's a better game listening to it on the radio. You can listen to it on the radio and you're getting the kids back in. That's the whole point. That's is you the want big the kids thing. to watch it and they're going to be out of school at that point at 4 p.m. and they're going to be able to watch the game. And even if you start a game at two, 1 or 2 in the afternoon, guess what the schools are going to do? They're going to roll the TV in just like they did for me. Correct. And let's watch the game. You need to start these games earlier. You should have no playoff game ever start past 6 p.m. Eastern time. That should never happen. On a, week, on a weekend, 7 is good. His kids can stay up a little later. You have a Super Bowl starting at 5. True. Game 7 should never start at 7. It should be at 5 or 6. If, you're a, if you have a weekend game, you should be starting those games at 5. Not later. You should start them earlier. No Game 7 should ever start at 9 o'clock. It should be scheduled so it ends on a Sunday. Correct. And you're able to compete. If you make these changes, people are going to pay attention. The last one and my most favorite one is the 12th inning. 12th inning is once you get past the 10th and 11th extra innings you all of a sudden have a home run derby you have one player dedicated to this each player for each team home team bats last each player gets six pitches they get three warm-up pitches and then six pitches 12 pitches total you see what i did there very good you get six pitches that you get to see you either hit home runs or you don't if you are tied at the end of six pitches it is one then one then one then one the home team batter always hitting last and you end it. Pitchers are provided by the home team. Pitchers by your are provided by the home team. It's the same team you're going to have doing this. You're probably going to have one player that that's all they're there to do. Yeah. I mean, they're they're just there for that specifically. You practice this all the time. Kyle Plus, you're creating stars now in the league where you're going to want to see them hit home runs in the home run derby. You won't have stars sitting out anymore. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say it's Aaron Judge versus Kyle Schwarber. Who would not want to watch that home run derby well, exactly. in the 12th inning? Well, and right now, if you think about it, you're sitting at a game, right? 
It's getting into the ninth inning. It's a tie ball game going in extras. What's the worst thing about that? You don't know when this damn thing's going to end. You have no idea, and people leave early all the time. If all of a sudden you have a 12th inning, you're going to want to sit there, and you're begging for the 10th and the 11th to be tied so you can see this game end on a home run derby. And I will say that I have changed my opinion on one thing. I at one time said, not in the seventh game of the World Series. They shouldn't have to go to the national end. After watching hockey again, let's let it end. We do it on the 12th inning and be done with it. They know the end point. TV can plan for it better. Just end it. I, I did it. I did it. The first time in this show, I changed his opinion on my side, proving I'm clearly right on all other topics of conversation. Okay, that's just not even close to being right. I do think, though, because you want the game to end, I don't want to have a 2 o'clock finish no. for any game. You need to end the game, and, and you're going to wake your kids up to watch a home run derby Absolutely. knowing this is ending at any moment. Correct. Correct. You're not going to wake them up for the 12th if they're still playing because you don't know when this game's going to end. Yeah, and it could go on forever. But if you know in the 12th inning this is the home run derby and this is the end of the game, I'm waking my kid up every single time to watch that, and they're going to remember that forever. It's yeah. a better way to end the game. And to give give credit where credit is due, it's a Mike Greenberg rule. It is. I it's don't want to say it's I expanded on it. Yeah, well, we always make things better. Because then people steal our idea like they did with breaking up the divisions, which is yes. all of a sudden being talked about everywhere. Everywhere. Just for the record, we were way, way ahead Decade of you guys. Ago. Thank you for watching, though. We do appreciate it. Decade ago, we came up with this. Went on air with this over a year ago. And now it's everywhere. Now it's everywhere. It shows we have listeners. I like it. <laughs> which is great. And if you agree with all these changes and think it'll make baseball better, or if you don't like all of them, like the umpires and the you just don't want the sensors, sensors the best rule change out of all of them no let us know in the comments below and while you're down there like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it it is time for the most terrifying moment of my week it is time for the last word because the dad always gets the last word all you number one number one you do you know how long i picked up this crap all week in this studio from what you did last the week. confetti? Yes. It was a celebration. It's everywhere. God. Could have been glitter. I mean, Wait. it would have been worse. You hate glitter. You never do glitter. No. I'll do that for our... No, you show. won't, because we have a lot of equipment here that glitter can't get into. Eh. Okay, fine. Here's my other one. Novak Djokovic right yeah. now is not being allowed to come into the United States to play... He's asking permission. He's asking he permission. hasn't been denied. He shouldn't have to ask permission. For God's sakes, we've gotten through COVID. We know what, and I know I'm going to sound like this You're guy. You're jumping ahead. Explain why he's asking for permission. I was just about to. You are supposed to sit there and shut up, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Djokovic wants, is asked permission to come in because he's not vaccinated. New York is New York, and they're just like, oh, everybody's got to be vaccinated. Screw that. We've gotten through COVID the greatest athlete in the world one of them his body is his temple for god's sakes if he's done the research and he doesn't think the shot's going to help him it doesn't matter let him come in and play rogers ever took the shot and he's still playing football novak Djokovic oh, he's an come. american citizen i don't care Djokovic played here his whole career he yeah, speaks english COVID. better than most americans do not that they're saying much let him in to play in the U.S. Open. He doesn't need the damn shot to enter the country anymore because we've got millions coming in the southern border right now and not one of them has had a shot. So if you can't let the world's greatest tennis player come in without taking the shot, then I suggest you start shooting people up as they come in illegally on the southern border. I'm out. My father's opinion does not represent the, cha the decisions of all the people on this show. But this one does, actually. You can't let millions of people come in the southern border and then tell the greatest tennis player what... in the world he can't come in. These are two different discussions. No, they are one in the same. One in the same. You're not letting somebody come in to play a Miami professional Miami has already tournament. said they're going to allow Djokovic in as at well this point. Should. They're supporting his decision to come in even though he's unvaccinated in New York. It's not quite there yet. I don't know why. They're the ones they that also, are... He was also kicked out of Australia for that decision and was not allowed to play in the Australian Open for not being vaccinated and australia is a bunch of freaking idiots if they'd watch the science if we're gonna follow the science 
Here's my it's point in Australia. In. If I'm living in Australia, I'm much more afraid of the creatures that live in Australia by COVID. What was that blue octopus the or blue whatever? Ringed octopus? The blue ringed octopus is the most terrifying animal on the planet. That that is the animal that terrifies me the most. I'd rather talk about the southern border and the fact we're letting millions of. I'm going to talk about the shot. blue ring octopus in case you're not aware of the blue ring octopus. There is no vaccine or uh, no anti venom for the blue ring octopus. If you step on it, it will kill you within 24 hours. It has enough venom in it to kill 40 humans, and you'll just even if you know what it is. That's way different than COVID because most people survive. You have COVID. 24 hours to say goodbye. The blue ring octopus is the most terrifying creature on this if planet. you don't have a we have had a lot of COVID's fun not you. thank you so much as always for watching we really appreciate it we every do time appreciate it. it's been sports talk we with are Dad. 220 people short of six thousand. so please watch and please subscribe this has been sports talk with dad we'll talk to you next time